So, let me explain what you're going to see today. Basically, in the past I tried this game called Fear and Danger, but for some reason that I'll explain later in the video, I decided to drop it. But when I finally had the time to take it back, I decided that I was going to finish it. And this is basically a way to tell you what was my experience with it. I didn't do all the endings, I know there are like 8 endings or something. I only did the basic ending, which is the, the easiest one basically. And I just want to tell you what was my approach to it. Also because if you like this video, I may decide to bring a whole series on this game and also on a sequel that is called Fear and Hunger Termina. But without further ado, let's start with today's experience. Before we start, I think I should clarify what is Fear and Hunger. So, Fear and Danger, in small words, is a horror dungeon crawler that revolves all around this enormous, gigantic dungeon that is called the Dungeon of, of Fear and Danger, where our protagonists have certain missions to complete. Once you start a new game, you can choose between four characters, and of course I decided to go with the mercenary, because it reminds me of the basic warrior from other RPGs, and also because it seemed like the best way to start freshly a new game. In the difficulty selection, because of course I'm a hardcore player, I like challenges and stuff, I decided to go with the hardest difficulty available at the start. And oh boy, I couldn't be more wrong with one of my decisions. Once you start, basically, there is this long dialogue that tells you a lot about the story of your personal character, and there are some options, and dependently from the one that you choose, I think, you get some different uh, stuff or skills or something like that. And after that, the game begins. The first thing that I always do when I launch a new game is checking all the menus to see all the stuff that I can gather as information in order to get some advantages or something. And I was a little bit disoriented, this game was somewhat different from the other stuff that I played. There was a crafting system built within the menu, the item list was fine even though as I was fearing, the items weren't telling exactly what they were doing. They just had somewhat generic descriptions of their usage. But regardless of that, I was already noticing one thing. There was no music. Oh boy. It's only a few games that I played that didn't have the music, such as Dark Souls. And those games had an atmosphere. Like, a very cool atmosphere. So... I was starting to think, hmm, what if the atmosphere of this game is one of its main point? But aside from that, I just started looking around. Till I heard about some dogs barking. I wasn't actually too scared about that, but oh boy, I was so ignorant at the time. After I spent some more time looking around, the magic happened. <laughs> Alright, first battle of the game, I was excited, even though there wasn't even battle music. Huh, this game sure likes to make you feel uncomfortable. Okay, but regardless of that, I started exploring the menus in combat, and I wasn't too scared from these dogs, I mean, they're just the basic enemies. Just a few swings and I will be able to take them out, right? 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 Yeah... no, no. So... that's it, my first run. It lasted like one minute? Two minutes? Is there a speedrun for death category? Because I think I set a new record. What the hell was that? At this point I still wasn't, sh wasn't sure about the difficulty of the game, but I decided that I would have used the basic difficulty because I wanted to see if there was something that I was missing or if higher difficulties have some mechanics that made enemies more strong or something like that, because I just was so confused about an enemy like almost one shotting me at the start of the- at literally the first part of the game, the first room. 
This time we were in. Level 1 entrance is ours. So I started looting, I realized all the crates, the bookshelves and stuff can yield some items and so I just started looting all the possible stuff that I could and I think I found some piece of armor, maybe also a weapon, I don't remember exactly and I felt confident. I was in an uncomfortable ambient but I was confident that with my equipment and with my strength I was going to wreck this dungeon in half. And then I saw a big scary enemy. I wasn't sure about how to approach him, but I just went in my head and thought maybe if I backstab him I'm gonna do some damage, and so I tried just to see if there was this mechanic in the game, or maybe it has to be unlocked, I don't know. But still, first official fight inside the dungeon. What do you mean I lost my left arm? I, I mean... Wait, wait... The, 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 uh? Uh... Okay... I, I don't know what's happening... The guard charges but you manage evading... Okay... Wait, I don't have my arm anymore? Is that, is that forever? Is that... Wait, 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 what do you mean? Wait! So I, I cannot... I cannot... Uh, what happens if I keep it? Mercenary cannot hold... What do you... And he comes back again? Huh? Oh! Still don't understand what does this coin flip does or something. Oh, I didn't need it. What happens? Uh... Ah! It's an insta kill? It's a. Uh, wait, wait, am I alive? I was fully immersed inside confusion. What just happened? Did really one single enemy cut my limbs off? And what happens for the rest of the game? Did I do I just have to complete the game without those? Is there a way to put them back? I don't know. I don't know anything. I decided to just go around and explore until, unfortunately, I finally met my doom. And so my attempts continued. The thing I was intrigued the most was trying different combinations of dialogues in the intro to see how my skills and my items would have changed. And so I experimented a lot with that. Also because, and this is a foreshadow for later, this was the only thing that I could explore and experiment with without getting punished, but you will understand later. How did I miss a, a, a door? H how can I miss a door? This time I decided to use the left entrance to the dungeon because maybe I thought maybe that was a higher level enemy, maybe I just had to enter into the left entrance to the dungeon, maybe there will be some easier stuff to do there. Also, at this current point of the game I noticed there are no levels, but no worries, we'll, we'll go to that later. Did the, did the floor just... Uh -huh. what 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 is uh okay okay so I can I can walk here <gasps> oh my god what was that is he following me is it like did I I I I know I didn't have to go this downstairs so this is wait no 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 why taking items I just have to rush I don't I don't ah! No, leave me alone, leave me alone. What, what is this? No, go away, go go away. Okay, okay. Why is the screen so strange? Okay, let's just, can we, can we just... Oh. And so I started annihilating everything in my way until finally I realized two things. Number one, how do I heal myself? And number two, what 
the hell is that status? I discovered the blue flask can be used to heal myself, but I still wasn't sure how to farm it consistently. And how do I remove that damn status? Until I finally reached what I thought was the first real boss of the game. You know tutorial bosses from game, I don't know, Gandhi from Dark Souls 3, or let's go to another fantasy RPG, Final Fantasy, the first boss usually is just to understand the mechanics of the game, attacks, defenses and that kind of stuff, right? So let's see. It was, I think at this moment that I was starting to realize something was wrong, something was strange. I didn't feel like in one of the games that I typically play, I wasn't saying this game was bad or something, it was different, but I've never experienced something like this and so I didn't know how. But that feeling didn't last long because I was finally able to beat one of the first basic enemies of the game with one remaining HP. Yes! Yes! One HP, but I won the clutch there! Oh my god. No, 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 no. No. Give me some. Okay, meat cleaver and the loincloth. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see what does this one to. What these two do. So the loincloth is is not actually an item, it's uh, oh it's a web uh, an armor that's very bad. And the, the, the meat cleaver is a weapon that is like the iron mace that it's it's three points of attack more than my scimitar. Okay. To say that I was disappointed was nothing. Then I found a little girl inside a cage, and I was able to open the cage immediately because I had lockpicking from the starting intro, and I was maybe understanding why I was doing so bad with the enemies. I was by myself. I had to make a party. In game, in RPGs, usually you can go around, get new party members, and with them you get more strength, right? Yeah, whatever. Uh, anyways, I'm still happy that I got a new party member. Then I was able to open a door using a purifying talisman I found in the basement, and I discovered the Hexen, which I guess is a way to upgrade weapons, so it's a blacksmith, and it's also uh, the, the maiden of Dark Souls 3, it gets you, uh, it lets you obtain new abilities and stuff uh, for your class. But apparently I need a currency that I don't have, which is the souls. Whatever, we'll remind that for later. No, if one guard was able to put me on one HP, this upgraded version of the guard shield is gonna kill me in one attack. No, we are gonna use what we have at our disposal, the rank command, and we're gonna go away. No thanks. I met a new person, but still not a new party member, but whatever, NPCs usually have missions and stuff, they give you free items, free weapons, and also I finally found, found a way to save the game! I was so excited! And you rest too, maybe that gives you, I don't know, health, it fully replenishes your health, and... A coin flip? Oh, uh, maybe it's for extra benefits, right? And so my explorations, my attempts of, ex of explorations continued. Who the freaking 
freak is that? Who who is that? Why is he just staring at me like that? Is he? It has a black hair, but the rest of the body is not of that color. What what is it? And then I was finally able to ambush that guy who tortured me. Uh, he was called Trortur, I think, and I killed it. Yes. And now I can finally advance in the game and see new stuff and maybe I'll finally be able to get some p new party members, new weapons, new ways to save the game and stuff. And I found a big hole. I wasn't so sure but maybe under this big hole there will be some useful items or stuff. I also tried to investigate but there was not a lot of information, so I think I also tried to uh, light a torch at one point to see if I was able to see what was down there, then I just de decided to jump. So now I do have to finish the whole game without my legs? I is that how it works? I is that? I mean, if I want to go down here I have to lose my legs? What? But down here I was finally able to find one of the souls that was required to upgrade my weapons and gain new abilities, so not everything was going wrong, right? Uh, this is a different battle team, what a... Is this a boss fight? Did I, did I trigger a boss fight without wanting to? And... Uh, why is my character standing in place if he doesn't have legs anymore? And I guess you already know what happened there. I synthesized all of this a lot. Actually, it was like 5 hours of gameplay total. And after these 5 hours, I just dropped the game. Not exactly because it was a bad game, but just because I felt it wasn't my type of a game. And so, some time passed. A day passed, a week passed, a month passed, and I wasn't thinking about fear and anger anymore, until I came across a channel named Heartless Angel Kitsueki. You know, the first time I started playing fear and anger was because I wanted to bring it on the channel, and at the same time I was bringing a game called Lona RPG. And I wanted to get some extra information about the game, about things that maybe I didn't know, in order to be extra prepared for all the stuff and also not say gibberish during the video, you know. And so I started looking up for some content creators that brought games and that brought specifically Lona RPG. And I came across this channel called Heartless Angel Itsu Ketsueki. I think at the time uh, he had like, uh, I don't know, 800 subscribers or something. And he started a gameplay of Lona. And so I started following it. But I noticed something. He had uh, in the channel not only gameplay of Lona RPG, but also soundtrack of Fear and Hunger. And I realized something. I heard like two soundtracks in the whole game. Maybe there is better stuff to hear. So I listened to some of the soundtracks of Termina and of Fear and Hunger and I was astonished. I decided that I was gonna end the game but let's just say I was busy with something else, then I started with Black Souls, then I continued with Monster Girl Quest, but now during my exam session I needed a game that was quick to play, I wanted to do something to relax between uh, the exams, I didn't want to record a lot, I already have, had prepared some videos for Monster Girl Quest in order to not let the channel die, but I was interested to finish Fear and Hunger. Also, a little mention, unfortunately, Heart Heartless Angel Kitsueki channel died, probably because, I don't know, YouTube Terms of Service or something. I have no idea specifically. Also because, I don't know why his channel should die and my shouldn't on that note. I mean, I censor all genitalia and stuff, but so did uh, he, so why? Whatever. Let's keep that for a little reminder. And so I came back to the game. I came back because I wanted to finish it. I began analyzing all the stuff that I was doing during the gameplay because I wanted to understand where I was making mistakes, where I was making good things, where I was able to improve. And 
With all this, I finally got to one very scary conclusion. There is one reason I was unable to complete this game on the first time. There is one reason for which I was so estranged from all that happened around me in this game. This game is the opposite of Dark Souls. This is the Subnautica of RPGs. Let me go deeper on this concept. Let's start by Dark Souls. So, the whole experience of this game from From Software is about being able to win against enemies of equal power without even having to die, actually. It may become a try or die experience for you, but the core of the game is actually to be able to understand how the, the, the enemy and the mechanic works on the first try and be able to overcome them with your strategizing and thinking. This game, on the other hand, doesn't want you to understand the mechanics, because if you don't know how the enemies will react, and how to overcome a certain situation, or even just basically what do items do, you are not going to be able to progress easily. And the most important point is that the game is against you. You are not more powerful than the enemies. The enemies are more powerful than you. They have plot armor. They are able to wipe you in just one single swing of their machete. They are the protagonist. There are insta-kills in all the enemies where they can just go and flip a coin and if you miss it, you'll die. And also, I discovered something during my tries. The coin flip is, al is almost as if it was programmed to go against your decision. It is a 50-50, then why sometimes it just makes tails 15 times in a row? 15 times in a row is a very low chance. This game is against you, it doesn't want to be completed, and so it doesn't want even to explain you what happens. And here's, this is the point in which we link to Subnautica. Subnautica has the same concept. It doesn't want you to understand how do Reaper Leviathans work. It doesn't want you to understand how Ghost Leviathans work, because that creates terror. But there is one problem. If I'm terrified, I'm not able to explore, because I don't want to lose my progresses, also because even saving the game is difficult. And so what happens? That I don't look, that I don't explore, that I don't try things. And so what happens? That I die, because I'm not prepared to face the situations, because I wasn't able to explore. But I had to find a way, I had to find the crucial piece of the puzzle that I was missing. And, after some time, I finally realized. While I was in a battle against a guard, I think, I realized something. If you cut off some of his body parts, and you run out of the battle, and then you met, meet the same enemy once again, he will still have his limbs cut off. And, on the first turn, he will either have his uh, genitalia shine or something, or just he will not do anything if his genitalia was cut off. And so, what happens? If we are able to consistently escape from him, and we are because of ex escape plan and ability that we got during the introduction, then we are able to kill him without taking any damage. My brain was exploding. I finally understand what was the part that I was missing. My character was the mercenary. And in its description it was explained that it was able to overcome difficult situations with tricky ways. I don't have to defeat these enemies with loyalty, facing them in a fair fight. I have to be the villain. I have to be the one that uses tricks. I have to be the one that cheats. Also I realized another thing that was keeping me from being able to experiment with stuff. I was unable to establish a save file where, uh, where my health was good and my body and my mind were perfect. But I finally realized something. When you try to sleep in a bed, an enemy that is on that floor will try to kill you. But what happens if you kill all the enemies on the floor? Right. No one comes. 
And even if you fail the coin flip and you can't sleep in the same bed anymore, you can just go in the in the floor underground and sleep in another bed. Here there are actually, yeah, there are some guards, but once you have killed them all, there will be only those flying creatures laying around. And after that you are free to save whenever you want, wherever you want. Guys, we have finally established a save file. And now the experimentation can go on forever. I tried to use the talk option to a lot of the enemies and I discovered that in the underground part which is accessible by using a lever that turns on an elevator, there is actually this dog that is called Moonless and if you talk to him two times, actually to her I should say because it is a she, then she will join your party so we have a new damage dealer finally. And at this point I feel confident enough to try to take on the boss in the underground because I want the soul stone that lies on the ground. I was feeling very confident about my party, but unfortunately something unexpected, as always in this game, has to happen. What do you mean? Oh no. Oh no, girl may seriously die. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, I, 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 I can't run. I, for sure I can't run. Okay, please, we have to win this fastly. Oh, oh no. Her breasts has regenerated. Okay, uh, let's destroy that first. It's very fragile. And the girl, uh, I mean... I, I don't have I don't have any healing stuff. I have the blue herb, but that's just 10 health. Oh no. Oh no. And just like that, the little girl that I freed died because of my decisions. I felt so bad. Even with trying to experiment and understand stuff and trying to cheat my way to victory, I had to leave something behind. Now the question was, do I care? I gotta say, I was able to see death in front of me. And I liked it. I wasn't feeling bad. I just felt like one of the items that I was using to protect in me made its purpose. So I was feeling pretty good. I didn't care. I didn't care about anyone except for me. And so my slow descent into madness started.
and when I finally arrived in front of the man that I was searching, the whole reason I entered this dungeon, I said something during my playthrough. Wait, did I come here for a man? I didn't even remember why I was doing this. I was just doing it because I had fun killing them. And soon enough, I will not be the only one to realize that. In fact, my character will say those exact lines too a few moments later, when he finally takes some time to think about all that happened by sitting on a chair. I don't know what I'll keep from this experience. I don't know how was I able to even leave the dungeon. I don't know if I was able to leave the dungeon, but a more important question came to my mind while I was thinking about that. Was I really able to keep my sanity? Ooh.